Have you ever wished that you could see your starting limit before signing up for a credit card? Before you dang your credit score or burn a Chase 524 slot? Are you tired of getting slapped in the face with a disrespectfully low starting limit that instantly makes you regret clicking the submit application button? Well, you need to know there are a few cards that will give you that ability. I'll show you how I was approved for a total limit of $47,400 without triggering a single credit pull and discuss how you can get approved for these cards that I'm about to list, along with how to increase your credit limit after approval so that it grows with you. Let's start with the Apple Card. It's the most accessible and widely available credit card that allows you to view your credit limit before you accept the offer and trigger a hard credit pull. There's actually a way to avoid the hard pull altogether, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Just take a look at some of the credit limits that other cardholders have been able to attain even before fully applying. The awesome part is the choice is completely up to you. If the limit that they offer you is too low for your liking, then just decline the offer and move on to something better. But if you like the offer, then hit accept. I currently don't have any Apple products, but I do have an Apple ID, so I applied and got a pre-approved for a $2,500 credit limit. I know, I know, it's small, but I'm totally confident that I can grow that limit to well above $10,000 with a good amount of usage in just a few months. By the end of this video, I'll have a total limit of over $47,000, and I want you to see where the largest limits come from because it really surprised me. So with the Apple Card, you get 3% cash back at 9 or 10 select merchants, including Apple, 2% back wherever you can use Apple Pay, which is available at most major retailers at this point, and 1% back with the physical card. You get the added benefit of using installment payments interest-free for up to 24 months for Apple purchases along with 3% back up front. The cash back you earn is available on a daily basis once the transaction clears, which many cards still don't allow you to do. And you get access to unlimited virtual card numbers whenever you check out online. Virtual cards are just digital cards that can be instantly created that have a temporary connection to your physical card. So that helps you add another layer of security between you and random merchants that you don't fully trust. To get approved for the Apple Card, you'll need at least a 600 FICO score with TransUnion, which makes this card the easiest to get qualified for on this list. In fact, it's so easy that the issuing bank for Apple Card, which is Goldman Sachs, is in some hot water for lowering the barrier to entry too low. They have the worst loss rate among US card issuers. That means they're letting so many people sign up for the card that it's hurting their profit margins, believe it or not. But in the rare case that you were denied for the Apple Card, you still may have an opportunity to get it even if your credit score is below 600. You might receive an offer to participate in the Path to Apple program, which is a program that allows you to fulfill a couple of tasks like making on-time payments and lowering your personal debt to improve your credit worthiness over a set period of time. And after that time passes and you fulfill those requirements, then you can get approved for the Apple card. Some cardholders have seen success using the item in cart hack to increase their odds of approval. All you have to do is place an expensive Apple product in your cart and select installment payments before applying for the Apple card. That seems to increase your chances of approval. Others have had luck using the credit freeze hack to avoid getting hit with a hard pull. Simply put, a credit freeze just prevents anyone from using your credit to sign up for new accounts. So the process looks like this. You apply for the Apple Card, then once you receive an offer, you immediately go and freeze your credit reports. Then you go back and accept the offer. If you're interested in trying that, I'll have links down below. So after you sign up for the Apple Card, how hard is it to increase your limit? Thankfully, it's very easy. And one of the standout benefits of the card is its ability to grow with you. Some card holders have received an auto limit increase just days after getting the card. That's unheard of with many other cards. Besides that, you should ask for a limit increase after 91 days of holding the card. You can really ask at any point in time because it only triggers a soft credit pull. Auto limit increases are quite frequent with this card. My wife has received at least two limit increases without even realizing it over the past year and a half. To achieve an increase with the Apple card, you want to maintain high usage on that card preferably over 30% for a few months in a row. So you need to keep it at the top of your wallet. Next is the First National Bank of Omaha, or FMBO for short, Evergreen Card. They created a truly streamlined process, especially for a credit union that allows you to get pre-approved and see your limit within seconds. Just a couple of months ago, I was pre-approved for a $9,400 starting limit and others are starting with limits much higher than mine. It earns 2% cash back on every purchase. It even comes with a $200 signup bonus when you spend over $1,000 
$1,000 in the first three months, which significantly increases the value, especially in the first year of use. You can redeem your cash back for a statement credit or deposit it into your FMBO account. You also get 0% interest on purchases and balance transfers in the first year. Something that I really like is that it comes with FICO score access. Pretty much every bank that issues credit cards will use your FICO score to evaluate your credit worthiness. A lot of cars today will only give you your Vantage score, which is useless because nobody uses that. It's also a Visa signature card, so you know your starting limit will be over $5,000. And also because it's a Visa card, it can be used at Costco. So they pull credit scores from Experian and you'll need at least a 700 score there. Getting pre-approval is awesome, but it's not absolutely necessary. Some have reported that they still got approved even though there were no offers displayed during the pre-approval process. If you receive a message saying you need to wait seven to 10 business days for a decision, don't be alarmed. Your application just went to manual review. It's a completely normal process. You can still be approved in a matter of a couple of days. They might ask for a few documents to verify your income, like a copy of your social security card, W-2s, and a driver's license. So you should know credit unions tend to require more documentation, but they also tend to give higher limits and rely heavily on relationship building to assess your credit worthiness. After you get the Evergreen card, you can increase your credit limit after six months of good performance. All you need to do is call customer service and ask if you're eligible for a soft credit pull increase. If the rep tells you no or that it'll be a hard pull, don't be discouraged. It's worth calling back and trying a different representative. They'll ask you standard application questions like housing costs and your yearly income. If you receive an increase, you'll need to wait four months before you're eligible for another one. And I should let you know, to learn more about cashback cards like this one, I'll have links down below. Next is the X1 card. It no longer has a wait list and it's openly available for you to apply. They advertise that you can expect five times larger limits with their card. And surprisingly, it's mostly true. Just take a look at the evidence from other card holders starting with massive limits. The average seems to be around $15,000 from what I've observed. They gave a limit of $17,000 to someone making just $55,000 per year. That's amazing. I even applied and received a pre-approval offer for $15,500. So like this video if you think that I should accept the offer. I'm still on the fence about it. With the X1 card, you get 2X points on every purchase and 3X points when you spend over $15,000 within a year. It's a metal card and it weighs 17 grams. So this is notable because unlike the Apple card, which is also metal, you can still earn this card's highest rewards when using the physical card. You also get access to virtual cards with the added benefit of using multiple virtual cards at once. You can even set a monthly limit amount for each virtual card. That's a nice addition. So even though you can only redeem your points for a full value at around 50 merchants, it does make it slightly better that those merchants are some of the largest in their respective categories. They seem to be heavily relying on your income to determine your credit worthiness. That's even stated in their advertisements and during the application process, they require you to link your bank account so they can make judgments based on your income and spending patterns. Let's talk about increasing your credit limit with the X1 card. The company says that increases happen automatically and just like pre-approvals are mostly based on how much your income increases. They tend to start you out at such a high limit. I wouldn't be surprised if most people are already close to their maximum limit already. Finally, the card with the most impressive credit limit offer that I've seen is the Dover Federal Credit Union Cash Back card. I remember getting an email offer from them with a truly jaw-dropping starting limit of $20,000. I've even seen an offer as high as $50,000 and that was from the credit plug himself. So this card is pretty simple. It's just a 2% flat rate card and you get a 0% intro offer on new purchases for the first year. To get approved, they will pull your FICO score from Experian and there are numerous reports saying that the pre-approval is just the first step of a more lengthy and scrutinizing approval process. Dover will most likely require you to submit two months of pay stubs, two years of tax returns, and a copy of your driver's license and possibly your social security card. From my experience, they are very serious about getting you signed up and they even call me the next day after I finish my initial pre-approval application, urging me to finish up the process. That's the first time that's ever happened to me and their customer service rep was a pleasure to talk to. As far as limit increases go, I would use a general relationship building strategy since they are a credit union. That means using all of their financial products like direct depositing checks into their accounts and using their loan products would be the best way to go. So if you total all the pre-approvals that I was able to obtain with these four cards, then you're gonna come up to $47,400. And I think that's truly impressive. These cards are awesome because you get a sneak peek behind the curtain to see what your credit limit will be without damaging your credit score. But one thing you'll notice is they don't offer great rewards. You probably already have a 2% card to begin with.
with. So these aren't the best cards to use for building out your credit card lineup. So you have to check out this next video where I show you the five best high limit credit cards of this year. Thank you for watching and you have a good one.